that's really bright. Okay, there we go. Hello again, everybody. I'm working once again on my 1992 R32 GTR, and today I am replacing rear brake shims because I was an idiot, and when I did these brake pads a few months ago, I threw away my shims. So I am replacing those shims today. Uh, if you've never done the rear brakes on a GTR, or any R32, even a Z32, it's the same brakes. Uh, you can follow this along and you'll see how to change your pads. And I'll show you the mistake I made with the shims along the way. So let's go. So there's nothing special about uh, the rear brakes on this car. Except that they're maybe a little bit different than the car that you've worked on before in that you do not have to remove the calipers to change out these pads. What we're going to do is we're going to pull this clip which is going to allow me to undo these two pins. Let's just pull out. This little spring pad is going to come flying. Uh, actually, I'm going to try to catch it. And then the pads just pull straight out. Uh, I'm going to be replacing the shims, so there is a little more gap that I need. Uh, if you're doing new pads, of course, you'd need more gap. And it's easiest to do that with a C-clamp. If you have a proper spreader tool, that's nice too. Uh, if you don't have a C-clamp, you can get in here and kind of pinch and pinch, just make sure you put something between the C-clamp and your caliper here so you don't mar that finish too bad. And just open it up as much as you can uh, to make room for your new equipment. So let me get this stuff out of there. So once you have the cross pins and the clips and the little pressure plate thing on the way, these little guys just pull right out like this. That's it. Pull right out. Out they come. So there's the pads. And there's all your parts, okay? These are the two side shims. There, actually, I'll show you where those go on the caliper here in a moment. Uh, if you look at a parts diagram, you'll see them too. But there's the shims that came with the pads. And they're just not doing the job. The factory Nissan shims go together. They're actually two-piece guys. They go like this. Unfortunately, I can't also use this shim that came with the pad with it. I'm actually going to pull these off and place them with these uh, factory style ones. And then these are brand new side shims. Ideally, you'd use all new parts uh, here too if you can find them and if you want to. These, are, despite their dinginess, are actually working very well. The biggest thing to watch out for is this guy. you got to make sure it still has springiness against these pins when it's installed. If not, that can be a source of uh, vibration and then, of course, squeals. Okay, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these old shims off, grease up these new shims and put them on there. After pulling those original the shims that came with the pads off, I think I found the culprit of my squeal. And it's this adhesive that was holding, quote marks, air quotes, the adhesive here that was holding the shims onto the pad has failed. I was able to just pull those right off. This stuff isn't holding anything. And I, so when I first put these pads in, they were silent. I had problems with the front, which I fixed by putting original shims back in. Uh, and I didn't have any problems with the rears. They were quiet, but I think this adhesive has failed and that allowed a harmonic or vibration build up between the pad and the end shim. So again, I'm gonna clean that off. And then put them in. The shims will go on with a uh, light coat of grease, very light coat here. I'm going to put the black shim on, another light coat of grease, and then the silver shim, and then a light coat of grease on there where it will actually contact the uh, piston and the caliper. So let me get these set up. Alright, so these little side shims, I've got one installed there already. They fit down under the caliper. If you look, there's actually kind of a Space on either side, I don't know if you can see it there. It'll make sense when you try to slip. There's actually a space for these little tongs to fit into down in there. So it just, uh, just go down in there, and push down until it gets to the caliper, and just kind of pops in. That's it. Here's your side shims. Nice brand new side shims installed. Unless they'll hold on their own, you don't have to worry about those falling out. One thing I really want to tell you guys too is when you're working with grease around your brake components is be very very cautious not to get any on your contact surfaces on your rotor uh, or on your brake pads obviously because grease in between those two things would be very detrimental um, so what I've done here is I've left the e-brake off and uh, so now that I've been working in this area with my hands putting those side shims in 
I'm going to actually rotate the, cal or the rotor now and clean the area I was in uh, because I don't want the little bit of grease that probably came from my fingers and onto the rotor to get stuck between the pad and smear all the way around. I've been very careful with the pads over on the table, making sure I was using a clean paper towel to set them on face down, and then been very careful with my fingers to make sure I don't touch the pads. So, no safety. Do not get grease on your rotors or pads. All right, so there they are, greased up and ready to go. I'm gonna clean up uh, that part a little bit. Those shims are gonna go in the junk, but keep that spring. You gotta have that spring. So let me get these things reinstalled. So again, these rear brakes are real simple. Man, it's loud. There's a lot of aircraft and helos and people playing music. Goodness. Anyway, uh, hopefully you can hear this. But anyway, the pads just slide right in where they came out of. Hopefully left enough space to get it in there, as you can see. And let's see what these side shims on these rear brakes. As you push down and they basically just kind of, well, they just kind of go into place. Um, sometimes they kind of pop and sometimes they just kind of sit in the bunch. You can see. There you can see. Anyway, they're lined up, they're ready to go. So now I can put the pins through with the, with the uh, spring and then the retaining clip that goes on the back. And we're done with this break. I went from those helos. Anyway, <laughs> uh, occasionally I get asked how exactly do the rear brakes on R32, Z32 work? And it's kind of interesting actually, and you don't see this a lot on cars, and it actually adds a lot of components to the rear end of a car. Um, not all of them do this. Uh, the parking brake, the e-brake for this vehicle is actually within the rear drum. So you've got a disc rotor, so a disc brake rotor in addition to a disc brake drum back here. So this is a drum brake and a disc, and a, uh, disc brake all in one back here. So the caliper is just for regular braking. It has nothing to do with the emergency brake. The emergency brake is all inside of here. Parking brake, whatever you want to call it. And it actually is a true twin shoe parking brake just like you'd find on either an older vehicle or maybe like a truck that would have drum brakes in the back and that's what that works it's a, anyway it's a lot of components they don't wear out very fast but if you do your rear rotors on your car when you pull this off you'll actually see all those components in there and it's nothing to really be intimidated about drum brakes are, are pretty easy to work on but uh, do know that there is a difference between the two brakes and uh, there's there's a little bit of adjustment you have to do through this hole uh, it has to be actually at the very bottom if you have to do it. There's a little adjuster you have to hit in there to get the the shoes. They're called shoes if it's a if a drum brake to get them to squish in a little bit so you can actually get this off. Otherwise, you well you might be able to get it off uh, with the e brake off, but you might not. And uh, yeah, when you go to put it back together, make sure you put this hole at the bottom so you can adjust your tension uh, of your parking brake before you put it good. Uh, anyway, my rear brakes are back together and it's time to get the wheels back on this thing go for a drive test out see if these things squeal anymore in case anybody's wondering here's the parts that i used for today's project uh, this kit came with everything you see here straight from nissan motors i sourced mine through amazon.co.jp it was the same price as the dealership and i well just for me it was more convenient because it delivered it right to the base so, there you go. Another thing I want to tell you guys, if you ever take the time to get underneath your vehicle for any reason, and you have a chance to put on a lift, do so. And go end to end under these things. As you can see, there's a lot of components. And because these cars, in general, are old, they sit low to the ground, and they've been driven on salty roads their whole life, there's a lot of damage under here that you're probably not seeing, even on the lower mileage cars. So take some time, if you're buying it especially, uh, but anytime you can get it on a lift, take a look under here, poke, prod, see what's broken. You're going to find something wrong with the car, I promise you. If you don't, you're not looking right. Uh, there's going to be rust, there's going to be maybe some boots, CV boots, steering boots, tie rod end boots, anything. There's, this stuff is old. It's been abused more than likely. Uh, take your time, take a good look, get a good list of stuff that you need to replace. Because, uh, you know, usually to use a lift, unless you got one in your house, it costs a few dollars to use it. So get under here and figure out what you need. So. After a short drive, I can tell you that the brake shims did in fact work. They did exactly what I needed them to. Before any time, regardless of speed pretty much, fast or slow, if I hit the brakes on this car, the back brake squealed. Now it's just silent. And that's great. So if you're having trouble with your R32 brakes, they're squealing all the time, you're throwing grease at them, you're saying, I don't get it, what's going on? I don't know how to fix these brakes. It must be the pads. Well, I have EBC reds on the front. 
Uh, they're power stops in the back, uh, simply because I got a good deal on them. <laughs> but uh, EBC Reds are kind of notorious noisy brakes, and the factory factory shims silenced them. The front EBCs also have the rubber pad that comes with the EBC brakes. That's on there. It's got a good adhesive on it, and the shims back that up. So those things have about as much quieting material on them as you can get. The rear ones are just the factory shims on top of metal backed pads, very typical pads, and uh, they're, they're now silent after making noise for months and months and months. So if you're struggling with your brake noise on your R32, take a look at your pads. If you don't have your shims, probably your most likely culprit right there. Thanks for watching today, everybody. Please like, comment, subscribe, whatever order I'm supposed to say that in, and have fun out there on the road. Be safe. It's getting warm out there. A lot of people on the road. Be safe, drive safe, and have some fun. Bye, everybody.